Not too long ago, we did a video on how to do inverted border radius or curved radiuses where they're inverting inwards. And I know a lot of you like that video, but I want to show you another method whereby we can use less child containers and we can still get that inverted border radius effect over here. And inside of there, we might want to drop in some further text or maybe a call to action button. Imagine this was a hero banner and you got an image and you might have some text over on top of it. Well, the text is actually inside of the container. And then you've got a call to action. And when you hover over it or click it, it's going to take you to somewhere else down your page or another part of your website. Really easy to do. And I'm going to show you how to do that. By the way, I'm Imran from Web Squadron. I hope you like, subscribe, share and follow and follow the tips on how to get the most out of your websites for you, your clients and your business. So let's break it down. We have a parent container, which basically contains everything that we see over here. If you want to set a boxed width, full width, you can be my guest. What's important though is the child container that sits inside. This child container, and I've titled it Child C BG Image, is what contains your background image. So I've currently set this to be 1000 pixels wide and 400 uh, pixels high. Of course, you can use VH percentages, EM, anything like that. I've also set my gaps to be 0, 0. But the important bit is when we go to the style, I've gone and set an image. Why have I done this as a background overlay? You're probably wondering, because if I went to background and I set a color here, I could get a near perfect overlay if I was to go back to my background overlay and I use the blend mode of multiple. The child container has two subchildren, A1 and A2. This is A1 over here. It starts over here and it ends there. This is set to be 850 pixels wide. So our child is 1000 and I set my subchild, which is called A1, to be 850, meaning I've still got 150 left over for this side here. And the height is set to be 400. The gaps are set to be 0, 0. There's no style applied. There's no gradient, no nothing. And if you go to the advanced tab, the only thing I've done is given it a class name of invert hyphen one. Now, the class names you give it are actually very, very important. So you need to make a note of this. Now, if there is a better, easier way to do this, I'm open all this, but I think this is pretty powerful in the amount of control it gives you. So my A1 container, which is over here, has got the class name invert one. Now let's go over to A2, which sits here. This is set to be 150, as I've already clarified, 1000 minus 850 equals 150. This is also set to be 400 in height, so it's the top to bottom. And if we go to the advanced tab, this is called invert hyphen two. So invert one and invert two. But you will notice that if you go and expand now on A1 and A2, A1 just contains a heading. Let's just go back to A1 for a moment. It's set to be justified to the end, so I could put it in the middle or the top or whatever, because I wanted to add in a heading, which is what I've done. Whereas A2, if we go over to the layout, is just set to be center, center. And inside of there, we have further sub, sub children. Container, 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 container. Now, the reason I've done that is because I might want to drop further items inside of the containers. And also, I want to have particular styling for them as well. So if we now go to subchild container over here and we go to the advanced tab, this is called invert three. This container over here is called invert four. This container here is called invert five. And the final one is called invert six. So we are using quite a lot of child subchild containers. Because I have found that I get load more control doing it this way than just applying a bit of code to say the A2 container. Now, let me just clarify though, for invert three, it is set to be 75, 75. Invert four is 75, 75 as well. Invert five is basically like the difference. So it's still 75 in width because it's 150 divided by two. And then if you do 400 take away 75, you're gonna get 325. If you wanna do it with percentages, you can do. I just prefer to do it this way. And obviously you can modify this to work and look good in the mobile. I should just quickly show you that if we do go to the mobile, if you go and address the size of your value, so here it's now 45 and 255 instead of 75 and 325, it's still going to look and work perfectly fine. So all I've done is define the sizes of my containers. You can do this with a grid as well. I'm using Flexbox. You can perfectly do this with CSS grid as well. There's no issues there. I've tested it out. 
Inside of uh, this particular container, I've just gone and dropped in an icon and then you would go and add in a link. You could add in text, you could add in another image, you can do what you want, okay? The power of what we do here with how these radiuses appear is all down to the CSS that sits in the child. So sorry for the long-winded approach here, but I wanted to make sure you understood the structure of what we have. So when we go to child container, it's not the parent, not the subchild, but the child container, and you now go to custom CSS, we do have a bit of lengthy CSS. I'm not going to lie, it does look quite long, but it's not that tricky or difficult, okay? There are some things that you have to leave set, so the top bit you do not touch, you've got to leave as it is. The only thing you might want to change is where I've gone and said anything beginning with the word invert. So you'll notice I set a pattern invert 1, 2, invert 2, invert 3, invert 4, all the way to invert 6. So I've said anything that begins with invert, ensure that this is all happening. And this then means that what I do next just flows through perfectly fine. I've then said for invert 1, which is this one over here, this is the bit you need to change. And in fact, to make this easier for you, the bits you need to change are in uppercase, capital, right? So you can see where I've said border radius, border radius, border radius, background color, border radius, background color, whatever you want. So this is going to make it easier for you to apply. So I've said 25, which is over here, 0, 0, 25. And you can see the code there. So I'm only applying a radius for there and over here. Now let's go and have a look at uh, invert number two. Well, I don't need to do anything there because that is this entire cane, uh, container that we see here. Invert number three, I'm applying a curvature over here. So you can see I've got 0, 25, 0, 0, 0, 25, 0, 0. That should be easy to understand. Now let's go to invert number four. And this is where we are now clipping it. So here I'm saying 0, 0, 25. So over here, I'm now applying 25, but this time it's inverting. Because normally when you apply it, it goes like that way, right? Let me get my fingers right. No, my fingers like that. It, it, it curves like that. But because of what we've done up here, it now actually applies it the other way around. It's inverting it. And what we're now saying is add a background color of white to that. But what it does is because it's doing it on top of the background image, which was the child container, you can still see the background image uh, bleed through over there. Bleed through is probably the wrong term, right? It shows. And then over here for invert number four, and by the way, I have also added in a bit of code over here so that if maybe you wanted to have a different size apply. So for invert number four, I've said apply 0025. But when you get to the mobile, 25 was too much, and I found 20 looked better for the way it was curving. So you can add in a max media code, uh, not max media, media, at media code, you get the idea. And then for invert six, we've just applied a bit more radius over here, and you probably can't see it properly, but if I just go like that, you will see here we've got curve there and a curve there, because this bottom one is invert number six. This code will be in the video description or there will be a link to it because sometimes YouTube doesn't like it when you have brackets sometimes. Anyway, by doing it like this, and I know you might look at it and go, yeah, but you've got these empty child containers. They're just empty, all right? They're not going to kill you or anything like that. But by me having a container here at any point in time, I mean, I'm just going to copy this particular icon right now and I'm going to just paste it into there. All right, and if I go and align that particular container to be center, where am I, where am I, where am I? Over here, center again. You can see now it basically sits inside. That's with the power of a little bit of CSS. I hope this gets you thinking about how you can start using inverted board radii and go and check out our previous video if you wanna know how we did these particular effects because there's no SVG masking going on here, right? There's no image mask. There's no, we're not dropping in a logo or anything, not a logo, an SVG. Because what if you then suddenly decide, oh, I want to make the border radii here more rounded, less rounded, more rigid, you know, whatever. You just go and modify the CSS code and it will then apply it for you. I'm Imran from Web Squadron. I hope you like, subscribe, share and follow. See you soon.